Hi there guys, I wanted to do a video today covering something that I imagine a lot of people are very familiar with but there are probably people out there who are venturing into bushcraft for the first time or self-reliance and they're looking for reliable tools that they can take out with them into the woods to use in conjunction with natural materials to make fire. One of the most widely used tools out there is the ferrocerium rod or fire steel as its nickname goes and uh, they're very very efficient tools you can throw them in a puddle take them out and they'll produce sparks in excess of 3000 degrees Fahrenheit and they're very light and compact and uh, I carry two of them I have one just here on my main knife pouch which is my primary one and I also have another one just on my neck knife here a much smaller one that I only really use when I just take the neck knife out with me so using a ferro rod isn't really about speed it's not about how fast you strike it. It's really about how much pressure and the angle of what you're applying to scrape the ferro rod away. So if I do this really quickly and I don't apply much pressure, you can see the sparks are tiny and I'm not really going to ignite anything with that, even some fluffed up cotton wool. It would be a bit of a struggle for me. But if I apply a lot of pressure, you can see that suddenly those sparks are bouncing off the floor. So they're traveling a fair distance, continuing to burn wherever they may land and that's what you want so you want to ap apply a lot of pressure and go in at an angle if you've got a little striker like this you'll see it will have a sharp edge on it and you can put put that in you can also use the back of a knife for example you could use the back of my knife here so if I didn't want to carry a little striker around, around with me you could use the back of a blade so the way in which you use your ferro rod, the sort of technique that you'll use, whether you're showering an item in sparks, you're getting in close and you're gradually dragging down and driving those sparks where you want them to go, will be all governed by the type of tinder that you're using. I've brought some various tinders with me so we can try different things and you can see how they work and you may be able to relate that to the things that you're going to be using. So I've got the tinder pouch here full of barks and other things, bracket fungi, uh, chaga fungus, and I've got some, lot, um, some deadfall over there from an ash tree. You can see it's, it's plastered in different sort of types of fungi there, which is basically all cramp balls, to be honest. Um, but I've also got a large bracket fungi here that we can, we can play around with as well. And you can see how different sort of approaches with the ferro rod, different techniques really give you um, qu quicker success with the tinders that you're using. So I've got a range of different materials here. I've got some birch bark, I've got some cramp ball fungus, some chaga fungus, the trauma layer of Foams fomentarius, and an artist bracket. There are many, many more tinders out there, but these are just a few I'm going to show you in conjunction with the ferro rod. If you are interested in all the different funguses and tinders out there, I do have a couple of videos on the channel that I'll link below at the end of the video. So with these cramp balls here, you can see they're solid objects. They're not something we can fluff up into cotton wool or into a dust that's really going to stay together and hold an ember for us and it would be very difficult if you did make it into a dust to then transfer that to somewhere like a nest for example and blow into flame so you want to keep it as a solid object that's the best way to really use the cramp ball unless you're using it as a coal extender for a bow drill set or friction fire which is a completely different story and the way I generally use cramp balls this is the, the inside of the cramp ball where the concentric lines are that's the shell so you saw when I pull it off the tree, obviously I fractured it and exposed the inside. That's where the sparks want to go. So if I was using a cramp ball like this, and this one's very wet, um, I wouldn't just shower sparks down into the cramp ball, sort of hoping to get them into the right place. Because although you can do it, you end up using up a lot of material on your ferro rod. You can see I had a little ember there and it disappeared. But a better way to do it, I'm going to use this one that's a little bit drier, is to put your cramp ball on a hard surface. Place your fire rod just on the cramp ball like that. And just drag a few sparks down. And that way, you're not using so much of the material on your fire rod, you know, you're not scraping the hell out of it, showering sparks everywhere. So that's really what I mean by the sort of technique you use will be governed by the type of tinder you're using. If you're using something like a cramp ball that's not going to be fluffed up or you don't want to powder it up because then controlling the ember is really just going to be impossible. 
um, you want to keep it like a solid object and treat it like one in that respect you know if it did fluff up like cotton wool like a big pile of clematis or cattail or cotton wool for that matter you know I could drag my ferro rod away from the striker you know showering sparks down onto it and it would ignite a lot better because I'm covering a lot more surface area and there's a lot more oxygen within that cotton wool and it'll ignite a lot better but with this item here it's better to treat it like a solid object because obviously if you fluffed it up it would just crumble into pieces and be impossible to control and transfer anywhere so just by putting your ferro rod onto the bracket dragging a few light sparks down and put, making sure those sparks are in the right place you know, you're, you're making this a little bit more fuel efficient and you're just putting those sparks where they need to be getting the job done a lot quicker so with this piece of chaga fungus here you can see it's very very dense very hard bit of material a bit like the cramp ball you've got to treat it like a solid object I could again sort of stand a distance away from it sort of try and place sparks in the right place by dragging the ferro rod away and staying very rigid but again even though sparks have hit it they've just burnt away and to no avail they haven't really done too much so the same thing applies you know treat it like a solid object and if it's quite dense and it's not as fragile as the cramp ball for example you can be a lot more heavy handed with this you can put some sparks down you can see it's going already so again the kind of tinder has governed the kind of technique we're going to use and there was no need for me to stand there blasting sparks down on it for ages you know hoping for some accuracy when just placing the rod over the material and dragging a few sparks down where they need to be without flattening the spark of course and uh, it's ignited the material very easily for us I do want to keep this piece of chaga so I'll put it out with some moss so birch bark's one that requires just a tiny bit of preparation depending on whether you've got very very thin paper birch or not but this stuff here is obviously quite thick it's come off of a dead tree it's still got a sort of under residue on it and it's quite firm and all we want to do with this is take a small knife and just make a dust pile in a place on the bark that's kind of convenient So it looks like the rains are setting in again just as I finish this dust pile, black clouds overhead. But again, I've got a little pile of dust there and I could spend some time firing sparks in the right place and I probably would eventually get one in the right spot and ignite it, it is possible, I've done it before. But a far easier, than, easier method, again, just place your ferro rod down near the pile, make sure your striker, whether it be the back of a knife or a scraper, is at a 45 degree angle and you really want to cut into the ferro rod and it should ignite pretty much straight away and if you've got some backup pieces of birch obviously they go on and that's the beginnings of your fire right there and obviously some preparation beforehand would mean you have success so again the kind of technique we used there really did speed everything up for us just one scrape as opposed to many and we have a fire and in wet conditions where I live all the time pretty much all year round we'll always expect rain having birch bark and dead standing hazel can be the dividing factor between having a fire and not having one so employing a bit of good technique and you can have a fire going very easily don't want to lose my supply <laughs> In wet weather, birch bark's really the main thing that I use. I always do a basic fire lay. Just have a small raft here to keep it off the damp ground and allow oxygen to bring into it. And have a little V there. It just allows me to elevate the bundle that I'm going to be putting on top. You don't really want to be smothering the fire. You want oxygen to be in there. You want that gap. And just having that V just allows you to control the bundle on top and bring it up or down to allow more oxygen to come in so you're not starving it and putting out the flame
even in damp conditions, you can get a fire going really easily. It just requires finding a bit of dead standing wood and finding a tinder that produces a good flame for you. There are other techniques you can use like feathering sticks and things. But if you find sticks that are thin enough and dry enough like dead standing wood and something that burns for long enough like birch, it'd be very easy to get a fire going. And don't worry about smoke. The smoke will die down as soon as the heat picks up. So because of the heavy rains, a lot of the natural materials around that behave a lot like cotton wool, so are all soaked. And uh, to dry them out, it's going to be very, very difficult and it won't be done today. So I've prepared something like a little bit of a substitute to, short, to sort of show you, you know, how a cotton wool like tinder will behave. And really with a cotton wool like tinder, if ever you've used cotton wool and, and Vaseline, for example, you know that you mix cotton wool and Vaseline together and you sort of pull it apart and expand it out. Um, you know, to get air in there and, and break those fibres apart so it's not so dense. And then you shower it in sparks and it'll ignite and burst into flames and be very, very efficient. So with that kind of tinder, you wouldn't really push the ferro rod close onto it like you would with those sort of dense tinders we just looked at, those fungies, and scrape a few sparks onto it. You really want to shower some hot sparks in, in there, you know, to ignite the tinder and ignite the oxygen that's contained within those little air pockets so it all burst into flames. So I've spent some time fluffing up some amadou here as a substitute for cotton wool and it won't behave quite the same as cotton wool. Cotton wool will sort of burst into flames and ignite like a lot of other sort of natural materials that have the same properties of cotton wool and sort of being very spacious and full of air, very fine fibres. But what this will demonstrate is that fibres like that don't require sort of a dense amount of sparks being driven into one area. You can simply just drag your ferro rod away from it. You can see it's beginning to smoulder already. It requires very little ignition to actually get this amadou material going and you'll find that with a lot of sort of cotton wool type materials that have the same properties. So you can see this material has been smouldering for a very long time. That's just one of the good properties of amadou really. But if you do go out there and do some experimenting, I hope this video sort of helped out really because you know a lot of the sort of programs you see people using ferro rods and things, you know, they're they're blasting sparks down onto onto something you can't quite see and then a fire's magically there and you sort of think, well what you know, how do you do that? Um, a lot of tinders behave differently, you know, some of them, you know, like a lot of the tinders we've used today, in fact all of them, apart from birch bark, um, you know, produce an ember like this. So they need to be put into then like a nest bundle of dry material, like dry grass, and blown into flame. And that's really how those two materials differ. So you have tinders that behave like embers, and tinders that produce naked flame, like birch bark and pine sap and things like that. Um, and they require sort of different methods with the ferro rod if you're going to use a ferro rod to ignite them. So you might want to get in close and just drive down some sparks like we did today. Just required one strike in most cases and, and our, uh, our, you know, our material was lit. Um, or it may be like cotton wool, or you may be using cotton wool and Vaseline and you may need to sort of blast some sparks down on it. Um, dragging the ferro rod away at an angle like that, you know, showering it in sparks, increasing that surface area because obviously you've got a material with a lot of surface area, igniting that material and the oxygen pockets in between and, and it'll burst into flames. So different tinders behave differently and you need different techniques to, to kind of get more success with them. So if you are looking for more information on bushcraft, I do have a website. You can go to www.mcqbushcraft.co.uk forward slash WP. And there are various articles on there and things designed to help you get started in bushcraft but also more advanced things as well if you are interested, as well as a video archive page where you can check out all the other videos that are available on YouTube. Do feel free to check it out and obviously contact me if you've got any questions uh, or write a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks again for watching guys and uh, yeah, really appreciate all the support and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.